Welcome to sunny Queensland Moto Park for the penultimate round of the Penrite Pro MX Championship presented by AMX Superstores. Located 83 kilometres southwest of Brisbane, this ride park has transformed into a national level top tier motocross track and is a home state ground for so many of our competitors who are chomping at the bit to go racing because Lee Hogan, it feels like an eternity since we've been racing at round six. Kate, absolutely. I hate these big breaks. I just want to get back to racing. It's so good to be back here at QMP. In MX1, the championship title fight is game on. Two rounds to go, 20 points separating the top three and the championship leader, Dean Ferris, finding another gear. Well, Kate, how good is it that the closest points battle we see in the Premier MX1 class? Dean Ferris has not put a foot wrong so far, but he's only got a seven-point lead over Jed Beaton on the Boost Mobile Honda. And Jed is riding exceptionally good here at QMP. But 20 points back off Ferris is Aaron Tanti, who is not completely out of the game. So it's still up for grabs and can't wait to watch that play out. Oh, so exciting. All right, let's head over to our expert commentator, Denny Ham. Well, it is certainly exciting times down here on the start line. The points chase is well and truly alight. And the guy sitting in the hot seat is this man here, Dean Ferris. Dean, only a seven-point lead at the moment going into the first of our two motors here today. How are you feeling? Yeah, good. I had an awesome break. Um, just kept increasing my speed and trying to get better. Yeah, the morning was so-so. Um, I only did one lap in Super Pole and it was kind of average. So, um, yeah, anyway, I got the gate I wanted and that's the main thing. Now, we've seen you do, uh, the time's not so quick in Super Pole, but man, the way you rebound in these races, you turn it around so strong. I feel we're gonna see something like that again today. Yeah, hopefully we do. Well, good luck, mate. Kate. Kurt Gibbs uh, on the KTM, uh, pretty decent qualifying for you. Uh, good performance here last year. Tell us what you think is possible here this weekend. Yeah, like we like we seen in Super Bowl, everyone's super close. So um, need to get a good start. Um, track's quite demanding that way. So um, yeah, big start like last year, where you need to start here. And um, yeah, we're just going to put everything into that and see how we go. And tell us about your tyre choice, because uh, there's a couple of you, Ferris, and you've gone with the, with the same tyre. Tell us about your choice. Uh, just like I said, the start's going to be a huge thing here. So um, yeah, get a start and uh, try and give everyone a bit of roost and keep out in front. Yeah, get that paddle going. And what are your goals for this championship? because you're sitting in P4, not too far behind Aaron Tanti, who's in P3. Yeah, obviously the boys are riding really well and we, uh, we're finally getting to a point with the bike where I'm quite happy. So, um, yeah, got to try and uh, click these last two rounds off and do well. All right, good luck out there, Kirk. Let's head over to the Michelin track preview with your expert commentators, Danny Ham and Lee Hogan. There is no doubt that the 2023 championship season has been pretty crazy. The riders and teams never know what to expect when they turn up to a race. However, here in Queensland for the penultimate round of this championship, we are greeted with beautiful sunny weather and not a single cloud in the sky. And the track is absolutely pristine at the moment. The crew done an exceptional job getting this ready. And as you can see, turn number one, we can see the ground, the, the dirt, it's just beautiful. It's just breaking apart right now, which is going to give ultimate traction a lot of wraps around the track. The start straight, super long. Now this is important because it can sap the power out of the bike, however it evens up the playing field for the riders on the start gate. You don't necessarily have to be in the ideal start gate to give yourself a chance to get a whole shot here. Straight into turn number one, you can see behind me, it has a little rise, a little elevation, and it's a double apex turn. And we saw a lot of riders last year go down in this particular spot. So once again, as we always say, starts are crucial, even more so here. Because of this dirt, if you don't get that start, put yourself in a good position here, it's really gonna make your race difficult coming through that first lap. The track here at QMP, it's phenomenal. It's got a little bit of everything. Now let's start with the soil content. It's got enough topsoil in it that it produces the most amazing berms. But likewise, it's got enough clay in it that it gets some super deep straight line ruts that form up really quite hard packed. We've also got amazing elevation here, great views for the spectators and lots of passing opportunities. But something that's brand new for 2023, is right behind me here, the Michelin Whoop section. Now this is going to throw a little bit of a curveball to the riders and once again provide some more passing opportunities. Only a handful of corners away from the finish line. 
Now whether the riders choose to try to get up and skim across the top of these or use a bit of a rhythm technique, my tip is I think they're going to try to double in then maybe wheel tap triple and then double out or perhaps double, double, triple all the way to the top. Either way, a very exciting part of the track here at QMP. There will be no shortages of challenges for the riders this weekend that will really test them in this soil. The ruts that get developed, especially in this particular area, are really going to challenge them. This jump behind me, we saw no less than 10 to 15 ruts that really challenged these riders, especially later in the day when that sun got low and the shadows presented themselves, made it very difficult for these riders to see. Expect to see that through the rest of the track as this surface is absolutely pristine. And that there is this Brown's Michelin Track Preview. Of course, the riders just completed their sight lap and forks getting pulled down as the start buttons get locked in. Riders in anticipation and it's go time, Danny Hammer. The start is very important here. Crucial on these big bikes. The jump out of the gate is also important. And I think it's, uh, if you're buried in the pack, especially through the first couple of corners where they're so tight, they get so bunched up, you can be really disadvantaged. One thing I do want to bring up, Lee, is when I was just down there chatting with Ferris and also beaten just the calmness and the confidence between the two. The calm of Ferris, it didn't care they didn't quite get the uh, fastest time. The confidence in beaten knowing he got the fastest time is just really polar opposites and great to see. All right, let's take a look at the Thor MX1 lineup, Moto1, Aaron Tanti, Kyle Webster, Kirk Gibbs, Jed Beaton, Dean Ferris, the biggest names in Australian motocross. Hamish Harwood also has a good start in this one. Watson got into the top 10 shootout, so that was fantastic. Metcalf, Waters and Joel Evan back there in 10th. Liam Jackson, Luke Zielinski, Jai Walker, Regan Duffy, another big name, Seager Ward, Joel Phillips, the list goes on. Great to see Bailey Malkowitz back out there too. Also, Lee, on the 450 after a big stint on the sideline with injury. A long time off with a knee reconstruction. It's so good to see him back. And up on a 450, we're used to seeing him on the 250. Now, the question, Danny Ham, does anyone have anything for Dean Ferris out of the gate? Can we see a whole shot from someone else? Well, it's going to be tough. He has shown so many times this year just how good he is, but that answer is coming to us very soon, Lee Hogan, as the gates are set to jump. Someone jumping a little early. Has oh. that upset a few of the riders? Multiple riders getting stuck in the gate, but Dean Ferris with a mammoth hole shot there and trying to pick up. That looks to be... Oh, a rider coming together. Both riders staying on two wheels, but as it sits at the moment, this is the battle we want, ladies and gentlemen. We have got Dean Ferris from Jed Beaton. Perfect set up there by Beaton. He didn't go into the corner that well, but snuck up the inside and managed to pass about four guys. Oh, in the background, a rider going down. Not sure who it that one like is. looks like an orange... Uh, no, it's not Kurt Gibbs, but no. it looks like an orange machine. So, yeah, very well thought out by uh, Beaton early on that one. Puts him straight Zachary in there. In second. Yeah, I was just getting to that wow. before we can. 100% whole shot award. Dean Ferris, of course. Brilliant. But look at this ride by Watson. Gets himself in the top 10 shootout and now sits up there battling with the best in the country as privateer. Fantastic to see this. Oh, he was just trying to pass Jed Beaton. I'm like, who is this on the number eight? And I had to look across and what a fantastic start to the race here. And he finds himself here now next to Kyle Webster. So Webster has made a very quick pass on Watson and a little bit of separation now for Jed Beaton. He cannot afford to let Ferris walk off into the distance. Now, let's pick up some tabs on Aaron Tanti. He's back in seventh place. Yep, so let's go through that leaderboard. Ferris, Beaton, Webster, Watson, we mentioned. Metcalf is behind them, then Waters. Tanti, as you said, seventh. He was in ninth just moments ago across the last sector. Gibbs is in behind them. Both of these guys were able to set very quick times in the AMX. Oops, look, pole shootout. Wow, those two lines came together so close. And thankfully, these two riders did not hit. That was, of course, Waters and Tanti. I saw you just clinch up there, Lee, next to me. That was scary moments. Yeah, I thought those both of those lines were going to come together, but fortunately they didn't. And uh, as we see at the moment on screen, Kirk Gibbs, um, he 
made the call before. I put the paddle tyre on. He took the gamble um, to try to get a good start. He got a terrible start. So let's hope that plays out for him throughout the race. He's going to have to tackle a lot of corners with that paddle. Tansy looks good there in sixth place at the moment behind Metcalf. Yeah, I'm super impressed to see that they've popped this water down. It definitely needed it. Right about this time of the day, we would have started to see a lot of dust coming up. So, yes, it's made it a little bit slippery here for the first of the MX-1 motos straight after lunch. But I think it's only going to be a couple of laps before yep. this track comes into its own. Yeah, it won't take too long at all before you start seeing the comfort really coming into it. As we go across to our timing in here in our little sweat box that we've got going on, at 52.8 is Dean Ferris just in front of Beaton at a 52.6. So the faster of the two is Jed Beaton at the moment. But 2.6 seconds is a comfortable gap in Dean Ferris's book. So he can ride the race he wants to at this point. Yes, correct. Jed Beaton back there in second. And that gap is stretching ever so slightly. Cole Webster back there in third place. So a Honda 2-3 back to Zachary Watson. Likewise, and a Honda back there in fourth. And we have Brett Metcalf in fifth place. So looking at those times, Beaton is chipping away at it. Down to two needs. So yes. keep your eye on that at home. Have a look at those intervals on the leaderboard there, the Thor MX-1 leaderboard. You will be able to see who is the mover. But on screen, you can see the mover right now. Tanty is starting to get a little desperate. He wants to make this pass and continue forwards and a little pat on the back here for Brett Metcalf he finds himself in a good solid position he needs to be right up there towards that top five to potentially get himself his first podium of 2023 I had a chance to talk to Metcalf prior to the racing today and uh, said yep things are good he's very happy he's going to go around again next year which is absolutely awesome to see he's gonna have another shot at it so we're not gonna lose him to the retirement train just yet but he is stuck Starting to put the pressure now on Watson as they drop down through the AMX Superstore's right-hander and down to the bottom. Forceful move there by Metcalf. Will drop up or get up one more position. Tanty is behind Metcalf and only 1.1 seconds back. So he's starting to find his feet a little Ooh. bit at the moment. How about the hook in the corner there for Dean Ferris? But he has dropped the hammer. He is trying to gap yes. Jed Beaton. There is no way Beaton will be just slowly easing his way in and allow this to happen. He won't be doing this on purpose, I promise you. And they are matching their lap times, lap for lap, these two, as they find their feet and get more comfortable every single time they go around. Through the Pirelli left here is Ferris. That bike seems to be working pretty good. We made mention earlier on uh, in the live stream broadcast that we thought the bike didn't look quite as a settled uh, through practice. Maybe some changes have been made and they're out there looking very comfortable at the moment. Yeah, look to me, and, and I made comment watching him going into the first turn in practice and those little chattery bumps, the bike looked really active. It was twitchy, it was dancing all over the place. Now, I've got a funny feeling they were expecting a little bit of a deeper track and not quite as many small bumps. So I guarantee you they've gone back and they've softened everything up. They've softened the compression a little bit. They've sped up the rebound a bit just to get the tyres to stay on the ground a little bit more and not pack down quite so much. It looks like a different bike at the moment. And you can see that just with the back of the Honda at the moment. When they went into the corner there, the back end stepping out, that could be a factor of maybe being a little bit stiff, not quite as free moving in that rebound. And we saw it just a moment ago. There is Metcalf still working. I'll tell you what, he has not dropped off the back of Webster just yet. They are still well within tow. Some great lap time speed from Metcalf at the moment. I'm super impressed from Kyle Webster. I didn't expect this kind of speed with him and early in a race, a lot of the time it takes him a while to ease his way into the race and we know how fit he is in the last half of the race. We did expect this from Jed Beaton, of course, coming out being the fastest in pole shootout. He set it on fire. We knew he was on this weekend. I actually kind of thought he would have been able to stay a little closer to Dean Ferris. Almost five seconds off the leader at the moment. And this is exactly what we said. Well, I was talking about or referring to on the start line. Dean Ferris is so well known to uh, maybe not qualify the best, but the moment the gate drops, the way he can turn it around and rebound and just make stuff happen, especially on those opening laps, is just sensational. And it takes quite a strong mind to turn yourself around like that. It was another one of those hole shots, another good start that we're 
come to expect from him. And when you come up here to these kind of tracks with this surface, and very, very similar to what we saw at Toowoomba, he's really almost unstoppable. However, if we go back to Toowoomba, he was fastest in qualifying, fastest pole shootout, won both motos. It didn't start the day that way here, did it? No, it didn't. But he is certainly proving the point at the moment as we see Tanty. It looks a little bit tight coming out of there. It's one of those tracks that you can fight it very, very hard uh, and tighten yourself up. But then watching it through that part, he looks very fluid as well. So bike twitching around, it's a, it's a tough track right now. It's been something that the riders have said earlier on today. It is a pretty tough track to get around as we take another look at this replay here. Now, I was just going to touch on this as we watch Todd Waters make a fantastic pass here on Kurt Gibbs. Now, we want to give credit where credit's due. Now, we need to let everyone at home know that Todd Waters just come off the back of a pretty serious injury that he sustained at the Hatter Desert Race, where he almost knocked himself unconscious, clipped the top of a tree, was wheeling through a whoop section, popped up a little too high, and basically got clotheslined off the back of the bike. Now, he had to get clearance just yesterday to be able to race. So went through the full procedure, got the tick of approval, but you can imagine the limited amount of time that he's had on the bike. So what an amazing job that we're seeing from Todd Waters at the moment. And look at this now. Beaton is not too far in front of Webster and say hello to the 24 machine that's joined the party because he is right on the back wheel of Webster just behind Beaton here. This is going to get exciting over these next couple of laps blue flag out there for a lapped rider just trying to move out of the way of Jed Beaton oh. and nice evasive manoeuvre there for Brett Metcalf and once again there's lapped riders everywhere in this early stage of the moto and Tanti is not far behind that did you see the little puff of smoke there from Metcalf's bike no, just coming through there? I did not. Uh, it's nothing to worry about at the moment, nothing okay. to see here nothing to mention, nothing to see No. Nah. But what a ride. Look, the smoke coming out of the back of the bike or not, there's smoke coming out the, the back of him. He's just that that amped at the moment. He just must be smiling and having a look over at the pit board. What's going on? Yes, yes, you are in fourth place and you are right in the mix here. There's a potential that if he continues that form, he could go to second place. He is really moving forward fast. So that there is the 24 machine on screen of Metcalf as they are deep into the lapped riders here. And it is very difficult with these ruts, the way they are, to clear some of these riders. Sometimes if you pick the wrong one, you can be very disadvantaged. But at the same time, you may cop a win here and there. Maybe the rider in front of you might get caught up. But uh, these guys here are really pushing hard. Look at that. Look at Metcalf. Yes, bring it on. He's got nothing to lose whatsoever. What F an amazing job by Brett Metcalf. Well, Dean Ferris continues to lead from Jed Beaton, Kyle Webster, Brett Metcalf and Aaron Tanty. Quick little break, don't go anywhere. Plenty more action when we come back. Welcome back to the Penrod Oils Pro MX Championships brought to you by AMX Superstores. We are nearing the end of MX1, moto number one brought to you by Thor with five minutes, 24 seconds left on the clock, plus a lap as our race leader, Dean Ferris, negotiates his way past lap riders. Has himself a very handy little 10.6 second lead who Jed Beaton back in second place has himself a four-point second lead over Kyle Webster. So still plenty of time for anything to happen, Danny Ham. A lot can happen in these last five minutes, but uh, you'd have to think that with the way Ferris is looking so comfortable at the moment, uh, this one here is well and truly within his grasp. He certainly is a, a very experienced rider that knows exactly how to close one of these races down. I just watched their lead, 2-2-3, two, two, exactly like you mentioned there in the opener there with the uh, track preview. That's exactly what he's doing. And that's the thing with him. When he gets into that form, he can just bounce his way through and turn these little jumps into nice, smooth combos and just make his life so much easier rather than beat themselves up trying to skim through whoops like that. It's just the way he's riding. Although that one there was a nice little kick. So just two minutes to go, plus a lap here for Dean Ferris, who has not put a foot wrong. It's basically your perfect scenario. Great jump out of the gate, good run down the main straight, perfect into the first turn. Got himself a little bit of a gap, 
but didn't rush into the race too much, but then dropped the hammer. What was it, lap three, lap four? Yep. Pretty much dropped the fastest lap of the race and then just sort of stamped a little bit of dominance there. We must make comment, though, that this is the best that we've seen Jed beaten other than an amazing ride in the very sloppy, muddy conditions at Wodonga. But we can't, you can't gauge yourself too much off the, off the muddy conditions. As far as, you know, the normal conditions that we'd like to see when you're battling it out for a championship, which make up the bulk of your title, this is the best we've seen him. He's fresh off the back of a trip to America, where he impressed greatly at Washougal. And he's come back and he's came out, he came out firing on all cylinders for time qualifying and pole shootout, getting the win here. And nothing wrong with what he's done here. He put himself into second place right off the get-go in this moto, and he's stayed within 13 seconds of a, of a hard-charging Dean Ferris. Very impressed with the way he's riding. As we see, Metcalf clears a couple of the laps riders, and Tanti seems to be finding some fire at the moment. He is pushing very hard as he goes to the inside of the track, the right-hand side, through that gully there as they drop down that big hill into the right through Honda turn here and into Dunlop left. Can Tanti push it past and get Metcalf through these lap riders? He's certainly coming within striking range of the KTM in front of him with uh, 29 seconds to go. We are, we are two laps, I would say. If Ferris has crossed over, he will cross over the finish line. He just did. So we have two laps to go in this moto. Can Tanti push it through? Well, we'll have to wait and see. A nice sneaky little look off to the right-hand side for Dean Ferris. Reading what that pit board had to say. I wonder what it said. I think it would, I dare say, it would say, bring her home. So Ferris said over the break that he just, you know, he's just in the same program. Keep on pushing, keep on working. It's exactly what he's doing is showing right now with how comfortable he is on the bike. A little mistake going into that corner, but very quickly picked that up and just recounted that uh, little high side-ish sort of motion that he had going on. Never was there a problem in his mind, but uh, certainly it's a little unsettled through there that time around. But what a ride it is. Oh, one of the rides down to that. Yeah, that's a Husqvarna, and I'm just hoping that's not. No, it's the gear color. I don't think. It's, uh, no. yeah, it is, it's Todd Waters. So, so Todd has gone, gone down and he's gone down in a big way. So um, he's certainly conscious, he's up on his feet. He looked like he was holding on to, was it a shoulder or a sternum? Yeah, I would have said shoulder, shoulder by the look of it, yes. Yeah, main thing, and you just need to be so careful of his consecutive head knocks. So he said he was coming off already a concussion prior to his had a crush. So, uh, yeah, the most scary thing there is to make sure that that, uh, that head doesn't take another knock. So uh, let's hope he's OK and such a sad thing to see Todd Waters out. He had a, a very nice charge going in the early stages of the race. Having a bit of a look on screen at the moment from Aaron Tanti, who just hasn't really fired on all cylinders Ooh. in this race, has he? No, and then the, the mistake just there lost all that ground that he had been working on to close in. It was down to 1.2 seconds as they crossed the line the next time around. I think it'll be closer to uh, maybe even three seconds. Uh, so quite a lot of ground lost there as they are on the last lap now with the leader going across the finish line already. He is starting that run home towards the chequered flag. I feel like Tanti may have just said, OK, we're just going to close this one out now. Well, there's been multiple times this season where at the end of the race, he's made a little bit of a wrong judgment call and ended up having a crash. And it cost himself some positions. If you find yourself back in fifth place here at the moment, he will be gutted. He will be devastated at the end of this one. It was a make or break race for him, having only four left to go before the end of the championship as we wrap up Coolum next weekend. But it's all about this guy at the moment as he tips it in on a lapped rider. When you're in this kind of form, gaps just seem to present themselves, don't they? Yeah, he's doing very well at the moment. Still very central on that bike and looking comfortable, letting it work underneath him. As he goes up through this right hand of the Alpine Star right, up over this table top before they launch back down the hill. Such a picturesque part of the track. What a nice shot. little diagonal from behind, a nice little peel out. He's feeling it at the moment. He's comfortable. It's not very often you see Dean Ferris getting stylish over jumps like that, unless it benefits him some way, shape, or form in speed or, you know, trying to aim for a line that he's trying to hit. So 
Uh, amazing form we're seeing from him at the moment as he makes his way towards the finish. Through the right hand here, AMX right down towards this step up of the way we saw waters go down just a moment ago. The CDR Yamaha Monster Energy Rider, triple one on the bike with the red plate. He's going to come around and get that checkered flag lead. Tips it into the final corner and he'll make his way towards that checkered flag. And what a win, stamping dominance here in the Thor MX1 Moto 1. 25 minutes plus a lap in the books and he has scored maximum points. A great job also by Jed Beaton. He will be disappointed. He needed to try to make some points back on Ferris. Third place through Kyle Webster. Not a bad job at all for the Boost Mobile Honda rider. We still have another MX1 Moto with plenty to play for. All right, let's take a look at the Thor results. MX1 Moto 1, Dean Ferris with the win. From Jed Beaton, Kyle Webster rounding out the top three. Brett Metcalf, what a fantastic fourth place ahead of Aaron Tanti. Saw so Harwood was also up there in six. Got himself around uh, Kirk Gibbs as well. Dylan Wood with an 11th. Zelinski, Dunlop, Marshall, Watts back there in 15th place. So great ride by all. Um, Cannot wait to see how this one plays out in moto number two. The track absolutely getting brutal at the moment. Well, that next one really is setting up to be an electric final couple of races at Coolum. But Jed Beaton is the man at the moment that needs to do the work. And Kate Peck got the chance to catch up with him in the pits. On the boost, Mobile Honda in his first year back racing in Oz Pro MX after six years racing MXGP. Jed Beaton joins me. Jed, it's great to have you back here racing and fighting for this championship in MX1. Uh, we've had a really long break between rounds. You were quite productive. You headed over to the US. Tell us about testing in your debut race in the AMA Pro Motocross. Uh, went to uh, America to do some testing. Um, and then ended up getting the phone call to say that I could go and race and then all kind of just snowballed a little bit from there. So um, I'm glad that I went and done it. It was, uh, it was good fun, uh, something different. And then uh, obviously outlined the testing that we did beforehand. It was good to go and race and, and see what it was like in a race situation. So that was kind of the main reason why I went and did that. And uh, yeah, I'm super glad that I did it because we uh, tried to make some more progress after that too. So um, uh, all in all, it was really good. And running in top 10 for a good chunk of Modo, um, how did you find uh, the experience, especially in comparison to what you've had uh, during MXGP? Uh, yeah, it was, it was quite uh, similar to GPs, like the intensity of, the, of their level was quite high. Uh, just on the first couple of laps, it was just a little bit different. Being there, I didn't really know anyone, no one really knew me, so it was, uh, it was just quite a different atmosphere and I was more nervous on that side of things. We brought back some, some new suspension, a couple of changes to the bike. Yeah, we made a few little changes, but it's just uh, to go like harder or softer on the, on the suspension, we just went a little bit harder. Um, and yeah, overall it feels it feels a lot better and yeah, I'm finally starting to get comfortable on the bike now, which is good, but it would have been nice if it could have been a little bit earlier, but uh, we've uh, slowly got the ball rolling now and uh, it's come in a good time because we're still in the championship position and uh, it's the last two rounds, so um, yeah, looking forward to it. Yeah, so you're obviously fully focused on the task ahead. Seven points separate you and Dean Ferris. How do you dominate in these last two rounds at two very different tracks? I mean, it's just rolling up and uh, riding to the best of my ability, really. Getting good starts, um, being there the first few laps to be able to be out of all the chaos behind and being in the position to, to battle for race wins. And my goal is to go out there and do the best I can and, and get the best results possible for myself and the team. What would this championship mean to you in your first year back after MXGP? Obviously, it'd be good to uh, get a MX1 title. Yeah, that's the goal, is uh, always going for the title and, and get race wins. So, um, yeah, we've done enough work and a, a lot of riding, and I think we're in a good position to be able to battle for it. Great. We'll watch this space. Good luck in the championship, Jed Beaton. Thank you very much. Let's have a look at the Thor MX1 lineup, Moto number two. Aaron Tanti, of course, Kyle Webster, 
Kirk Gibbs, Jed Beaton, and Dean Ferris. Harwood had a good ride in the first one, as too did Watson. Metcalf, though, was lightning fast. I'm not sure about Waters, whether he's going to back out there. I'm, I didn't see, but he did have a big crash in moto number one, so hopefully he is OK. Jai Walker, Regan Duffy, likewise. Don't know if we'll see him out there. Took a big hit in moto one. Sieg Award, Joel Phillips, Robbie Marshall. Robbie Marshall, the freestyle back out there, having a go at it again. He just punished himself enough. He just, anyway, Dylan Wood back there also. Zane Dunlop and uh, Krebs also. Another rider we see quite often on the TV. He's back there. Corey White's the 17 machine. So many riders in this field. 40 deep in this field. Moto number two lining up. 15 second board is up. We are almost set to get Moto number two underway in the final race of the day. This one here is going to set the story going into Coolum. Can anyone beat Ferris as the gates drop? Good jump out of the Ooh. gate from Ferris in the middle of the pack, but that front wheel whipped Jeez. around. Who is that that's just swept in from the outside? I don't... Oh, 81. 81, is that Joel Evans? Yes, Joel Evans. Joel Evans, who has just managed to edge his way ahead of a very fast charging Aaron Tanty. But was that Dean Ferris that's come from nowhere to up near the point. Yes, it is. He's almost in the lead. Where did he come from in that first turn? Yeah, so what a charge. In fact, he is in the lead. He <laughs> is in the lead. Man, that has got to hurt these guys. There's something that they cannot afford to do right now is to let Ferris just man straight from there. As you can see, the front of his peak, he's got that big black extension and probably another peak there to try and uh, limit the amount of sunlight coming in as we look at the 100% whole shot award to Joe. Joel Evans, take a bow, mate, on the 81. What a start to get out in front of Ferris off the start. That is a mean feat. All right, well, this is warrior mode for Aaron Tanty. He has no choice. He's latched onto the back of this racetrack speed from Dean Ferris. He's got no choice. There's nothing to lose here. He is too far back in the points to start thinking about championship or, oh, I'd really like to finish third place in the title. Not the, not the case at all. He is going to unleash on Dean Ferris and try to make a pass in these early stages. Oh, and the changes. Oh, the knife of the front end and stuck under the bike. How long will this take? There's Beaton just went past there. Beaton needs to take massive advantage of this. Okay, so that front end of the triple one machine was absolutely caked with mud. Now, this is a dream come true for some of the rivals here. Now watch, as it goes down to the far inside, an enormous amount of water has been put down and just pushed straight through that side wall of the inside run. These are the things that these guys need to look out for on the opening lap. Not saying that he didn't see it, but maybe just misread it and it was a lot more water in that certain part of the track. If he didn't ride it on the, uh, the side lap, he wouldn't have known just how soft and wet it was. Unfortunate for him, fantastic for us as viewers because now that brings some life back into the championship. But Beaton has got himself a terrible start as well. He needs to be up the front taking advantage of this. Well, we've still got 22 minutes plus a lap to go. So much to unfold here in the second moto here at QMP. But you've got to wonder, Danny Ham, how much of that can be contributed to the racetrack pressure that Aaron Tanty was putting on in that first lap. It forced Ferris to go to a protective line that he didn't necessarily want to go to. And that was going to be my next point before the crash is that we've seen Tanty in this position before and he is so good at reading the rider in front of him, learning those lines, those different moves and keeping that pressure on. And right now it's paid benefit to him massively as he sits there in front of this field with a 1.9 second lead. He just stretched out three tenths on that last split. Now, Danny, we've got on screen at the moment Brett Metcalf, who I had a beautiful little chat with on the start line before uh, that you didn't hear. But the couple of questions that I asked was, are we looking or staring down the barrel of your first podium of the year? He said, look, I think that could be a possibility hoax. I don't want to bank in on it yet, but let's just watch and see how it plays out. Now, he's running a different front tyre. He's gone from the Michelin mid-soft to the mid-hard front tyre. Now, he's a huge fan of this tyre. So let's see how it goes. He has got company yeah. with Jed Beaton all over the back of him. And the way Beaton did that corner just then, he made a line that did not exist work just like he did right there. Yeah, wow. Two corners in a row, he's done that. He has got the board that said Ferris, or he's realised Ferris has gone down, 
This is my chance, and he is absolutely blasting it at the moment. Now sits there in third place, fourth place, uh, behind Evans, Webster, and Tanti, of course, in front of them. This is the moment he has to shine right now to keep this championship alive. But don't count out Ferris just yet. He's behind Gibbs, Harwood, Beaton. And he's only a couple back. There he is on the bottom of the screen. He's charging He hard. is right there. Yeah, he can't afford to make another big mistake like that. And I think he'll be he'll be trying to strike while the on top with uh, perhaps passing some of these riders in the early stages while everyone's so bunched together because you don't want to get caught behind too many riders and let these faster ones start to edge away. So as it sits right now, there's seven points difference, but that was before that particular pass was made and that doesn't include the passes that Ferris has just made. So this is going to see so these numbers are going to be so fluid at the moment just changing back and forth as we see Metcalf finally getting himself around Evans as too does Dean Ferris he is on a mission right now yes he is now I think it's only a matter of time before he edges his way past Brett Metcalf and I'm hoping that Medi can perhaps latch on to the back of did, did you see Ferris just check up there a little bit it looked like he was almost going to get a little bit of a nudge there from Joel Evans and so fast when he is on fire, but at the same time, Lee, that small mistake when he was oh in the back, Evans. Oh, such a such, such a, a good uh, start. Yeah, unfortunately for Evans, he got an awesome start. So sorry, Lee. I was going to say we saw at the front there was pressure, but he was riding on his own. Okay, let's look at this replay again. Look in the background, just coming into the corner right now. Front wheel. Oh, oh no! Oh, there's a little bit of Gibbs. help. Yeah, a little bit of help. But an interesting line from Evans trying to cut across the rut there. Yes. And it is Tanti that maintains that fast pace with another 154, the only rider in the 54s again on that very last lap. So Tanti was coming out swinging in this one, no doubt. And right now he's getting redemption in this field. Let's head down to Kate. An update on a couple of things. Uh, I've chatted to some mechanics. Dean Ferris, um, he's gone a click softer in suspension, but he stayed on the paddle tyre. Uh, Jed Beaton and Kyle Webster have gone a mid-hard tyre. And I just spoke to Craig Dack about what he said, what, what happened with Tanti between motos. And he was kind of saying that Tanti was struggling with line selection, struggling with traction. Um, so they've softened up suspension uh, for these tropic conditions, but just to keep that in mind in terms of line selection for him, and he is on a mid-soft. Well, it's good to hear that. So that yes. answered what we said. We feel a bit better about ourselves. Yeah, now, don't, don't look so stupid anymore. <laughs> but it's obvious. It's with a rider, the mentality side of it. If you can get just a couple of clicks, if you can get that suspension feeling just that little bit more plush, that little bit more smooth and in control, your riding can change so much in just a couple of clicks. Yeah, that's exactly right, Danny. And you've got to remember, it's one thing for us as punters to be watching. Us, we get, we're lucky, we get to call the action, we get to watch nice and close, but for everyone at home watching, for you guys to be able to look at a bike and noticeably see that it's handling better or it's more settled, you can only imagine from the pilot's point of view, from the rider's side of things, a click here or there, if you get it working better to the point of where we can noticeably see it, you can imagine how much more comfortable it is for them on the bike. So not to mention that, but also the arm pump, the energy at the end of the race where you're not holding on so tight and has a bit of a, a double-edged sword effect. Welcome back to the Penrod Oils Pro MX Championships brought to you by AMX Superstores. Right now, Ferris clearing his vision just as he goes over that jump there. I think he's on a roll-off system, by the way. He did that little pull of the cord. Is now right under the back wheel of the 96 of Webster. All of a sudden, looking at second place after being down on the ground, opening lap back there in almost 10. Yeah, he would have been kicking himself with that little crash. But, hey, you know, sometimes to be able to get back up again, get that heart rate elevated and get into race mode, not protection mode, it sometimes just kicks you into gear. And I think he'd be finding himself in a pretty happy headspace at the moment. At the moment, he would be very happy with the way things are progressing. He knows he's going to get himself some very valuable points with the 14 machine sitting in behind him, going into that final oh, oh, round. Oh, Tanti, Tanti, that's Tanti. So Tanti has come, oh, whoa, no. He, like, Tanti is gutted. So does he have a bike problem? What, 
what's going on here? Oh, he is no. taking the time to point down at the bike. So, like a gear shift. Brake. Is it a gear shift? He's pointing, to, he was pointing down. I don't think it's front brake. So mechanic t oh, t is telling yeah, him to calm can, down. Can, calm down, Not slow down. On. Calm down. Calm down, continue on. You're in a good See, position I, still. I don't know about what I'm thinking is for, for Tanti to be doing that. Yeah, so has he had another incident there? What is, what's going on here? My gut's telling me that the gear shift's been bent all the way around and he can't change gears because he's had an incident with a lap rider. Normally you would let that go, leave it behind you, but he's exited the corner and he's so focused on what was going on behind him. Oh, it looks like he's changing yeah. gears. Oh, I don't know, it looked like it sort of peaked out on the pace just there, Lee, so... Right. We'll try it. No, we can get like a gear lift, uh, gear shift that's there. Right. And uh, into the Max's right-hand turn, still oh. Webster. Ferris caught behind a rider. A lapped rider there, electing to go through that line, but uh, possibly wasn't the best choice. Man it managed to give Kyle Webster that little bit of a gap give credit where it's due and what a race it's been and not a bad day at all for Kyle Webster. Let's head down to Kate. A few injury updates. Um, Todd Waters, it was a shoulder injury, so they're looking at uh, his collarbone. Regan Duffy, he actually got a rock to the groin. He threw up, then he came off the bike and ran into another rider. Oh, wow, that's, so, a, that's a fair hit. That, that's a big hit and to, to throw up. Wow, no one wants to be... Ooh. No one wants to be doing that. So, oh, wow. Fair. Okay, shake that one off. That's a running into a lapped rider. Just let's settle down a little bit. That's not the kind of thing that you uh, expect to see from the championship points leader. So now we'll put the question across to you, Lee. Okay. Lee, uh, sorry, Ferris has had these couple of little moments. He's run into a lapped rider. He's a second and a half, two seconds now behind Webster. He does not have to beat Webster. No. Do you think that he starts to go, OK, time to just call it second place. I'm happy with this. I'm going to pick up some valuable points. No, Ferris is very strong mentally when it comes to these positions. And uh, I feel that, well, there's a mistake right there from Webster. It's not going to take much at all. And Ferris knows that, switches to the inside. Nice slingshot line up the inside here, and he will have the inside on the next jump. Can he stay low? A little bit of a look over to the left from Kyle Webster, and I believe that will stick because I don't see a, uh, a an exit clause here for Kyle Webster to be able to make an immediate pass straight back. I think that straight away, that's all she's taken. Yeah, so very wise move there from Ferris. And we saw this pass earlier in the race. He has a good run to the inside here. There's no bumps there either. It's a beautiful landing straight to the inside. And it's protective as well. Exactly. It's inside to inside, almost impossible to pass. So just going across to the leaderboard, Lee, and I've only just noticed it. Ferris, Webster, Beat, Gibbs, Mecca, Howard, Watson, Walker, Zelinski, Watson, Dunlop, anyone missing? Uh, yes. Aaron Tanti, he's yes. gone. Yes, he has. So that is, we were, it, we've just been given the word from our producer who's in the mechanics area, and it comes back to what I said after the incident. There had yes. to be a mechanical incident yep. for Aaron Tanti, the warrior that he is, to be wasting time looking down and pointing back or whatever. It was something major and something terminal, and that is gut-wrenching for the yeah. reigning champion. That is all she wrote for 2023 for Aaron Tanti. He put up such a valiant effort. He had the monster team behind him of CDR Yamaha. And of course, they have done such a great job doing everything they can. It essentially comes down to a two horse race now between Dean Ferris and Jed Beaton. And as points sit at the moment, 271 to 256. So it's stretched out a little bit more now that Ferris has made that pass on Kyle Webster and the teammate that is sitting in between. Yeah, it is uh, a very comfortable lead going into, into that final round as Ferris has stretched it out to four seconds. So what a ride it has been on the ground, on the opening lap, all the way back to 10th place, just picking them off one by one. Ferris has put the work in and he's looking very comfortable to close this one out as he will receive the last lap board around this time. And it hasn't been without moments. He's had his crash, he knifed the front end and filled it full of a disc of mud. His front wheel might as well have been like a velodrome front wheel. It was that full of mud. I was actually wondering if he was gonna be able to get up and get going. He, not only did he get up and get going, he calculated 
got his way through the pack as easy as you like, made his way all the way up, and during a battle, tagged the back of, was it Cole Webster? Yeah. Tagged the back, Nelly went down. Yep. So he's had some moments here, but uh, he has come out exactly how he wants to. And this is a good ride too for this man on screen, the 96 machine of Kyle Webster, who if they finish the way they do right now, it's only one more lap to go, will tie points with his teammate Jed Beaton and actually be awarded second overall on the day. So fantastic effort for him on a track that you, we say it all the time, he's a sand rider, but he really does know how to ride these tricky technical conditions as well. And I really look forward to seeing what he brings to the next round of Pool the final race of the year, the final time at Coolum. Make sure you get down to check it out. It's going to be some exciting racing over two days. The atmosphere will be electric if you're in the area or even if you're going to fly up for it. Make sure you get to it. It's going to be one of those very special events. And you know what, Danny? Missing out by one spot on the podium. Brett Metcalf yeah. with no Tanty there. So close to his first podium of the year. And look, he deserved to be up on the podium. But really, when you look at it, Ferris, Webster, Beaton, there's no one you can take off the podium there. So, look, hats off to Brett Metcalf on a job well done. He has to take some serious confidence away from this. Yeah, 100%. It's, uh, it's been a great ride for him as to this man here as he drops down to the Gabriel left-hander for the final time, up towards a step up, just in behind the 62 machine there of Dylan Wood. We go around the outside through Yamaha turn and into the final turn for the final time today. Give it up for this guy. Dean Ferris knows how to win a championship and he's doing everything right at the moment to put himself in that position to make sure he has got a good shot at it come the next round. Carl Webster taking second place points ahead of Jed Beaton in third. And they will tie on points overall with Kyle Webster getting the uh, count back there. What an amazing job for the Western Australian. And uh, he can certainly hold his head high after a job well done today. As we watch the rest of the riders make their way through, a very happy Dean Ferris finds his way to the podium. He'll be uh, doing yes. his celebrate, celebratory, celebrate, celebratory. That's the word. Over <laughs> to the wife. Get the hug. No, mum, mum. <laughs> How about that? Sure, she's not far away. But uh, what a performance by Ferris. There we go. Ferris today, absolutely dominant in this field. As you said, a few mistakes, but man, what a solid ride. Yeah, he was just in, in absolute warrior mode. He was out there racing, wasn't so much thinking about the championship. He just wanted to win races. Let's take a look at the Thor results. MX1 Moto2, Dean Ferris with a well-earned, hard-fought win from Kyle Webster and Jed Beaton in third. Kirk Gibbs back there in fourth place. Brett Metcalf rounding out fifth. Where did Kirk Gibbs come from? Yeah, Harwood, Watson again, both with fantastic results. Joe Walker. Another one, eighth place. Zelinski back there in ninth. Zane Dunlop in 11th. Bailey Malkowitz, Joel Evans, Dylan Wood, Cody Alone, Wilson Griner, Dash, and Braden Krebs there in 17th place. Let's go down to Kate. Jed beaten on the Boost Mobile Honda. Jed, uh, P3 for the round. Pole position, how are your starts? How was your day? How are your motos? Uh, yeah, the starts weren't too bad. Um, Struggled a little bit in the motos. I pumped up both races, so um, track was really uh, difficult today. It was long ruts, but like really sharp edge bumps in. Um, and yeah, I didn't feel very comfortable all day, but uh, we made the best out of it. Still on the podium and in the championship hunt, it's still one race to go. So um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It's going to come down to the wire, I think. Yeah. What are you thinking for Cool, and what can we expect for you there? Uh, just the same plan every weekend. Just go out there, ride my laps, and. Ride fast. I mean, today I wasn't fast. Uh, obviously, like I said, I struggled, so um, my goal is to just ride fast and then the rest will just happen from there. Excellent. All right, well done. Uh, the championship title fight is still on. Can't wait to see how you go in the final round. Cheers, thank you. Cheers. OK, in P2 for the round, Carl Webster. Great to see you on the podium. Really consistent ride from you. Uh, tell us how your day was. Yeah, uh, much better. <laughs> um, few mistakes in that last one that that cost me but uh sometimes that's racing i guess and 
a small tip over in the middle there, um, but track was really hard. Yeah. It was um, it was gnarly and the sun was low. So all in all, a good day though. Nice to be back on the podium and uh, yeah, hopefully carries momentum into next weekend. Yes, well, we've got a bit of sand for you next weekend, so you must be looking forward to it. Yeah, that'll be nice. <laughs> we've had plenty of hard pack this year, so a bit of sand will be good. Yeah, exactly. All right, we look forward to seeing how you go in the final round. Thank you and thanks to uh, everyone who makes it possible for us. Okay, thanks, Kyle. And in P1, Dean Ferris, uh, such important championship points. A few moments there, but wow, what a hard charge to come back to take this win for the round. Yeah, that was an awesome ride. Apart from the first lap, I made a boneheaded move and went to the mud on the inside. And uh, I was lucky I got out from under the bike real quick. Picked it up, I think I was in eighth, and then uh, worked my way forward, got into third, and then I caught Kyle and pushed Kyle towards Aaron. And uh, we started catching, and then I think Aaron got caught up for a bit of bad luck, and then it was on between me and Kyle. And uh, Kyle definitely stepped it up. He heard somewhere my lines were and had to get really creative. But uh, I'm glad I was really, really strong and able to come home with the win, double win. and. Yeah, maximised on the championship points today. So uh, one more to go. Woo! <laughs> yeah, we'll see you there, Dean. Can't wait. Thank you. Well, what a win and stamping authority here at QMP for Dean Ferris. That is the way you do it. Let's take a look at the Thor Championship points. MX1 provisional. Dean Ferris with 271 points ahead of Jed Beaton in second with 256. 15 points is a much healthier lead for Ferris going into this. 222 for Kirk Gibbs as he moves up one. Aaron Tanti and him will decide the third place in the uh, on the podium for the championship at the next round. Webster back there, 198. Hamish Harwood, 191. Metcalf, 177. Clout, 172. Still up there, even though he wasn't riding today. Waters, 146. And Zachary Watson rounds out the 10 in 129. Great job from our top 10 place getters there. And unfortunately, of course, Todd Waters not making it out there for the second moto. Would have been great to see him. I tell you what, once again, we get to have a look at that landscape. It's a beautiful place here at QMP. As our podium place getters there, first, second and third, Jed Beaton, Kyle Webster and Dean Ferris. Well, make sure you join us next weekend, August the 20th, as we head to the picturesque sandy circuit of Coolum on the Queensland Sunshine Coast for the final time as we wrap up the eighth and final round of the Penrod Oils Pro MX Championships brought to you by AMX Superstores. We've also got rounds seven and eight of the Yamaha Australian Off-Road Championships presented by MX Store at Kyneton in the South Australian Winery region, which will take place on August the 26th and 27th. And while you're at it, make sure you lock in round six of the My Bike Motorcycle Insurance Australian Superbike Championships presented by Motul as it heads next to Phillip Island Grand Prix. Well, what a day's racing we've seen here at QMP for round seven of the Penrod Oils Pro MX Championships brought to you by AMX Superstores. On behalf of Danny Ham, Kate Peck and myself, Lee Hogan, thanks for your company. We next head to the iconic Coolum Circuit in Queensland for the final round of the championship August the 20th. Do not miss that one. Goodbye for now.